all work. And I try to just remember to use that as fuel because at the end of the day, what we want to prove is that a company can actually succeed and grow, but still stay loyal to independent businesses, independent business owners, and keep them number one. And the theory that everybody else has is that that's impossible. And that when you get big, you can't scale that type of thing, and you'll stop caring, you just want money, and you'll be greedy. And so it drives us every day, like, can we prove that wrong? And can we actually like, stick to those initial values no matter what happens, you know, through thick and thin? So, so far, uh, you know, the team's been doing a great job holding me accountable on that. You know, our clients do a good job holding us accountable, accountable, but hopefully, you know, we're continuing to spread that and advance that, and hopefully we're doing better and better every day. So, anyway, I'm so privileged to be here, and I really appreciate everybody attending. And since he's come out, he started growing his hair out a little bit longer. He's been surfing a little bit, so... Dan, I'm glad you've uh, been a part of Hawaii, man. So just in a couple minutes, we're gonna um, we're gonna have a couple guys share. Uh, Stefan and Paul are gonna share about two kind of exciting things that are happening in our industry. All right, hey guys, uh, my name is Paul. This is Stefan. Just want to say thanks again for being here. You may be asking yourself, you know, why Apple Pay? Why throw an event like this? Uh, why talk about something like this? So we really wanted to bring in an expert who can really speak to uh, this technology a little bit. So if you could please welcome Stefan. Thank you. Um, so Apple Pay, that it's it's based on the premise of NFC devices or objects to communicate. In this case, highly secure information uh, back and forth between each other and, and allow a transaction to happen. Someone to pay for a, an, an item that they're buying into a business or a service. Um, this is something like, like Paul said has been around for a while. Google, you know, used it in their Google Wallet, and that's still out there on all the Android devices. And, and we think that Apple, uh, you know, now that they're in the market, is going to really bring a lot of market share uh, into the consumers to be able to, to go out and start purchasing up businesses. Um, the other side of it, with this technology, NFC, is it allows a greater level of security in every single transaction. That's that's one of the big keys. So when a consumer has an iPhone 6 or an iPhone 6 Plus, they take their card and they put it into their phone, they input the numbers into there, and it's stored in a, in a secure disk that's separate from all the other storage on the phone. And it's something that um, you know, a hacker or something can't just go in and replicate or duplicate or pull that information out of the phone. It's stored in there in such a way, and when they put it in there, it creates a transaction key with their bank, and it allows only that device to initiate a transaction with that phone. Uh, coming from that device. So it, it really creates this whole new level of security in every transaction that is, is going to help you know, when it comes to fraud prevention and help people you know, prevent chargebacks and whatnot. So it's just this whole level of technology that's really expanding and that was really going to blow it up. Yeah, thanks, Stefan. So, you know, it creates a safer um, process, it, it creates a faster experience. Um, but you may be wondering, you know, is Apple Pay a good fit for me? Would it, would it benefit my business? And, you know, a couple, um, I guess, factors to consider is, you know, what type of customer do you see coming to your business? Are they, you know, a younger, more tech savvy customer? Or That's a good question. So the question, if, if anyone didn't hear that, was uh, she's got a mobile app on her phone to accept payments. And I'm wondering if someone can use Apple Pay with her phone to be able to accept a payment. Right now, that's not something that's possible. Um, Apple's kind of closed down the API to that so that they can't work from phone to phone. That might be something that comes up in the future. Yeah. The question, the question was, when someone uh, makes a, a payment with Apple Pay, the, the card information isn't provided like to anyone while well, that happens. A key actually goes to the bank and it comes back. So the question was, how can I ad identify this transaction in the future and be able to maybe issue a refund or something like that? Um, so how that works is if I were to give you a glimpse on our, our systems in the back end, we actually don't have that information either. But you can still issue refunds from the terminal. Um, they would just bring their device in to initiate that refund. That's probably the only way that you'd be able to run a refund on that. Was there any other questions that you'd have regarding how you identify that transaction? So what it does um, for like research trying to get the last four digits or something like that, what's provided is a 16-digit card number that isn't the real card number. 
So you can use that to identify that transaction. It'll still print on a receipt. It'll have it'll look just like a normal credit card transaction. It'll have the last four digits and approval code. So that's what we'll see on our side. But it's not the real card number. It's just a, a token that's used to and generated specifically for identifying transactions like that. So I don't know if Square has a capability yet, but they're working on building that into their systems. Um, I, it's not similar to Square because you're not, you can't use Apple Pay uh, on a phone to accept payments. It's just used to like pay a business. So Apple Pay is allowing consumers to store their credit card inside of their phone and then use their phone as their wallet to pay for transactions. So to interact with the terminal instead of swiping the card. Would you add tips to a transaction? You would add tips just like you normally would. It, it wouldn't differentiate the process at all. So you would pull up the transaction by an invoice number. Um, typically, a, like every terminal will issue an invoice number for a transaction, and you'll pull it up on there and, and add it onto there. When it settles out at the end of the day, it'll settle that transaction with the tip on it, just like normal. We have terminals that we can provide, you know, for purchase or for rental. There's probably a lot of companies out there that sell them as well. But if you need a terminal, we can we can make that happen. Your existing terminal works. Uh, there are some existing terminals that work. Um, there's also some add-on peripherals that can be added, like a pin pad that allows you to accept this. You don't have to completely buy a new terminal. It's a more cost-efficient way of doing it. And uh, it's uh, going to be coming up in October of this year, so we have about nine months before we have to make this transition. But it's also a new way of accepting or uh, processing cards. So I'm going to pass it over again to the sage of the evening, and he's going to talk a little bit about um, EMV. So EMV stands for EuroPay MasterCard Visa, and it's uh, a type of technology. It's also uh, called Smart Card or Chip Card or Chip and Pin. And it is a chip that's literally embedded into the card. It's really big over in the European countries and up in Canada. And it does a very similar thing to Apple, where a bank inputs a very unique uh, transaction key in the card into that chip. And it's not something that can be duplicated or replicated. So it's, it's not um, you know, easy to hack into and replicate and create another card for it because it's very specific to the card. If, if the bank requires it. And then the transaction will process just like home. So instead of swiping the cards, we're able to insert this chip in. And it does a very similar thing. It adds a lot of security around the transaction and helps prevent fraud and hopefully eliminate any sort of fraud that's happening. Yeah, so um, an eye-opening statistic, and I thought this was really interesting, is while the U.S. actually makes up less than a quarter of credit card processing volume uh, worldwide, it actually accounts for more than half of the fraud globally. So that's a pretty eye-opening statistic. Um, and part of that reason is, uh, as Stefan already shared, is that this technology is actually already in place in places like Europe and Canada, and so they've already moved to this technology. So the U.S. is a little bit behind, but by moving this, uh, by moving to this technology, um, it's actually going to help a lot on the fraud side. So you know, some you know processors actually might use this as a scare tactic and, and saying that hey, you need to switch over, you need to buy this machine, you can do it now. You know, you're going to get sued, you're liable, and this or that. Um, well, part of that is true, the liability part of it isn't going to come until October of uh, this year, again, about nine months from now. Um, and basically how that'll work is if you don't have a terminal that can process this uh, EMV technology, then rather than the bank being liable for any fraud, um, you as the merchant would be. And so it's just important to know, again, it's not something that you need to necessarily do right this instant, but we do have the terminals available, we have the technology available, a um, number of POS systems, if you have a POS system already, a number of systems are actually already moving um, to this technology, and again, it's going to be something coming around in about nine months. Um, we're going to have a table over here for questions, um, but wanted to pause just for a couple minutes and see if there's any pressing questions about EMV. So, 
uh, the banks are actually, uh, sorry, the question uh, was, they own a business that does a lot of hard not present transactions. So a lot of stuff over the phone, or it could be over the internet. Um, with the shift in liability coming in October, that's gonna be very specific to hard present transactions. So it's not gonna change the way that you do business if the majority of your business is where the card is going to. Um, my understanding is that you'll still have the same type of you know, process when it comes to chargebacks and fraud liability that you have right now. There's no other questions. Um, I'll turn it back to Matt. All right, thank you guys. All right, next up, I want to invite up my friend and colleague, Russell Kimuris, if you can come up here. I got a quick story about Russell. We started about six years ago together, and we were kind of first starting in the industry. A lot, as a lot of you guys know, we sit down and meet with you and ask questions and learn about your situation. And Russell would just sit there, like kind of behind him and side. He just smile. He just sat there the whole time and smile. I think a lot of people signed on with it just because he looks so friendly and he smiles. So Dan, I have to attribute your smiling to this guy right here. He helped me learn how to smile too. So this is Russell. He's going to share a little bit about a tool that we found to be really useful that can help business owners like yourselves make good decisions with what you do in your business. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. It's been an honor to work with Gravity Payments and with you as merchants and we're always trying to find new ways to help you grow your business as well and this is a, a customer analytics tool that we want to kind of present to you and basically as a business owner you always have the you know, questions running through your mind what you know um, how do I get more people in the door you know did that ad that I run in the marketing work did you know did what kind of different um, target areas should we focus on next? Should we run this special? Should we run that? There's so many different questions. And a lot of times it's all guesswork. I don't, I don't know, well, I'm just gonna try this and hopefully this works, right? Well, this tool, which you know, up until now was probably made available mostly to the big box stores, the, you know, the guys who had a lot of money that could put to these kind of tools. We're, we're trying to bring it to the small business owners at a, at a more of a minimal cost, where you're still able to track trends, you're able to track different um, customers that have come into your business, repeat customers, all that kind of stuff. So you know, if you're a restaurant, per se, and you're thinking, well, I, I want to see if I can run a special that um, allows repeat customers. Well, this analytics tool will allow you to see if that customer came in, did they come back, how frequently did they come back. All these different tools are helpful, and you know hey, if that worked or not. Another thing is it tracks where they came from. So you start to see what demographic or which places that your customers are traveling through. Obviously, this is all credit card transactions, but anyone who uses a credit card has all that information available, and it's, it's showing you the different trends where you can start to track and make decisions based on not just guesswork or uh, maybe this is gonna work or maybe this trend where the spike that month really helped. Well now you can kind of look at your um, the trends that are being made in your business and kind of tailor specific um, either marketing initiatives or specials or mailers, whatever it might be to target specific areas. So we're really excited about this. As you said, it's not about cure all to everything, but it can really help your business. And obviously we're in the business of helping you grow your business and get profits into a place where you want it to be. So you know it's just one little tool for you to, to have have and make available. And if you have more questions, or I guess if you have any other specific questions, um, I'll, I'll bring up the guru Stefan, but I'll, I'll take any questions if you have any. Uh, Dan Price. <laughs> <laughs> any stories about like success stories or versions that like benefiting from it? Or Personally, I mean, I have a couple people that have signed up with the intent of using it. Um, how they've actually implemented, I haven't touched base with them exactly in how it actually, but maybe you have a couple that um, might have been able to use it or specifically targets. It's fairly new, but we're rolling it out and we know that you know people who are going to use it, use the data that's available, can actually make it work. If not, you just let it sit there, obviously, it's as good as you use it. So the question is a great question. The question is, does the analytics program integrate with any point of sale systems that you can then use data from the point of sale system to also bridge together with the customer in the United States? 
Um, we have one point of sale system that it does uh, integrate with. I'm not sure if it's fully built out yet, but it's something that's in process. It's uh, called a Clover POS. Um, and it's, it's, it was specific, there's an app that's going to be specifically designed on that POS to integrate with all this data and be able to tie directly to customers and directly to all the products and everything within that. Really good question. Probably have time for one more. Actually, I'll, I'll answer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Bring up Dan Price. So I, I have a couple of different uh, success stories. One was we had a client uh, that was a, a big restaurant, big country, and they wanted to know uh, what was their mix between local business and tourists. And they thought that economically they'd be more sensitive to economic ups and downs if it was all uh, tourists. So they wanted to like build out a business that was more shifted or to more local. They started running more apps and stuff targeting more locals. And they wanted they used this to figure out where their uh, the zip codes of people that are coming in. And they saw you know it shift. And they tried different things. They saw what worked and what didn't work. So that was one. Another trend that we've seen is the businesses that are the most healthy and sustainable that are going to be the best usually are the ones that have repeat uh, clients. So we use this tool to see uh, somebody that's coming in, how often are they coming back in? Are they coming in every week? Are they coming in every month? And again, they shifted their policies and procedures to try to incentivize more people to come in. They shifted a little bit of their spend away from advertising actually and toward um, providing more for their current guests, their current clients. And for them, it was really beneficial to kind of see that. And, and so those are just a couple of the trends, but we've actually found that there's been a whole bunch of different things that people have been able to pull out of this that we wouldn't even have guessed. The whole idea for us is this: all this data that you have with the credit cards, all data that we really think you as a merchant should own. So we just want to build a platform so you can see it and use it and manipulate it and basically just empower you to figure out any questions you have, anything you want to know from it. Uh, so that's the idea and then two success stories. Except. Thanks, guys. I want to invite one more person up. He's going to share about a, a service that we're offering. And it's uh, something that we've just kind of started doing over the last few years, and it's a way for us to invest back into the local businesses in our community. So I want to invite up Michael Chinen. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so I wanted to, I'm going to start talking about working capital. Um, I'm going to start with a story. Um, you know, uh, as we gain clients and we meet with people, we really build this relationship with each of our individuals we meet with them as we're meeting with them. And a while ago, I had a client that was asking me if I knew of a good company that they could actually borrow money from, or if they knew of any people that would lend them you know, some funding to expand their business. They were looking to grow their business by an additional location because of how busy that one location was. And they wanted to move into another market, actually, into Waikiki. And so at the time, I didn't really know much about it, and I asked our office, I knew we had something for our clients in regards to cash advances or working capital, and I reached out to our office, and they talked with the client, and the client actually wanted a pretty big sum of money to be able to start this new location. And the whole reason for the program was to be able to help my client to start his, or you know, expand his business and grow it. And so we were able to help him out by funding him this money to be able to start his new location and grow his business and kind of expand and look for other locations as well. So he now has four locations. But um, it just started with that one. And ideally, it's just to kind of help people when they need the funds that aren't available to them by um, other providers, whether it's uh, they need it right away or they don't qualify for a large sum because of the banks and whatnot too. And so the reason why we started this whole thing, does anyone have a green forest or park right there? There's a tow truck that's wanting to take it away if that's your car. Okay, glad we got that taken care of. Perfect time. All right, back to Michael. This is how we help our clients. We don't let their cars get towed. But um, yeah, I think the whole reason behind starting Working Capital was to be able to help our clients be able to invest in what they have and invest in the long term for their business, you know, really looking out for their best interest. And that's the same value that we share in, like, I think, all the aspects of the tools of our company. 
And one of the things that are nice, that's nice about working capital or this whole program is that it's tailored to each of the businesses. We don't just give money and require a certain dollar amount every single time or throughout the month, every month that's due or whatnot. It actually is scaled to the business in terms of their, their sales. So whether they have a, a update, say they do $10,000 today or they do $1,000 today, it's only a percentage of that batch will get um, pulled to pay off their advance. And so it really is tailored to each of our customers. It's not just something that, you know, we, we just kind of give up, you know, to, to su support them, but we really want to make sure that this is going to benefit their business. And so, yeah, I, I've done quite a bit of these. Um, and actually last year we were able to invest about $6 million into our clients. Um, you know, to be able to help them out. It's not a whole lot, but I mean, it's enough to be able to help them, you know, when they needed it, too. But um, I'm going to be calling up Matt. Oh, sorry. If you have any questions, if you have any questions, please feel free to come and see me because, you know, sometimes talking about these types of finances and whatnot, it is, um, you know, like, it can be a, a subject that you want to wanna tailor to each of your situations. So that's why I'm not going to be asking questions right now. But, um, yeah, if you have questions on our working capital um, program, please feel free to come and see me. Um, I'm wearing the gravity t-shirt <laughs> with the glowing shoes though. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm gonna be calling up Matt. Thank you. Thanks, Tyler. All right, that's funny if I dam back up here real fast. We're kind of gonna wrap up here, but Dan, I don't know if you guys know, you might even saw a picture real fast, I didn't mention it, but he won Entrepreneur of the Year by Entrepreneur Magazine. It was actually a shock to him. He actually didn't know. So he was, I think he was sitting with somebody and they actually showed him a picture that he hadn't even seen who was on the cover of Entrepreneur Magazine. So we're really proud of that, Dan. We're very proud of you, man. Congratulations on that. But I, I, more than that, I, you know, I think, Dan, it's been a pleasure working with him, but I would love for you just to share some thoughts about uh, just the impact that we're making in the industry and also the community. And if you have anything you would like to share with some of our friends here in Hawaii, we'd love to hear your thoughts, man. Absolutely. Well, I think um, as a small business owner, as an independent business owner, there's like a thousand different things to do. And so a lot of times things uh, fall through the cracks or, you know, you have lower priorities that you just can't meet. And if you think about the DNA of somebody that started their own business, a lot of times they wanted uh, personal freedom and then they wanted financial freedom. And oftentimes, uh, in an independent business, especially when you're getting off the ground or starting it, or in different phases, maybe it's a recession, you're actually in a situation where you're working more hours than you've ever worked before, you have less freedom than you've ever had before, and you might even be making less money than you ever made before. So I've been in that situation, and I, I think that that's the situation of a lot of small business owners. And then hopefully, you know, there's some good times too where those things aren't the case, but then you want to try to make things a little bit better because there really are just about like a thousand different things to do. So we, we all got together as a team at one point and we said, well, how could we really um, take care of uh, independent business owners and help them with that? And what we came up with was what they really need is somebody that they can trust because we can charge less, we can provide great service, we can provide full transparency, but at the end of the day, they want to just be able to uh, be able to relax and trust us and know that we're going to take care of everything. And so we came up with a goal of being the most trusted company in any industry for small businesses here in Hawaii. So that's kind of like our team 10-year goal that's like really exciting and challenging. We basically want to be the standard by which every other vendor is judged, where they start to demand this level of service and this level of trust and transparency. And so we're about, I think, two years into that 10-year goal. So we've about eight years left to get there, and we're really excited about it. And um, as much as uh, if any of you, you know, Notice that or appreciate that service. We'd love to get feedback from you. If there's been areas where we can improve that would allow you to be able to uh, see more that you feel like you can trust, we want to get that feedback as well. And then there's some real key things that we're looking for right now. We're looking to probably add between two and four members to our team over the next year or so. We're looking to probably add another person or two here in Oahu. And then we have Outer Line Islands too, so we're open to hiring somebody in Hawaii and also in Elam. Um, and so 
We love it if anybody has referrals or something that they know. I think the thing that it takes to succeed at Gravity is an attitude of service, but also working really hard and really like, you know, probably a lot of you, you know, know our team, so you kind of know what the DNA is that they're looking for. Um, so somebody, you know, at, at, at that type of level, somebody that you'd be really proud to have be your Gravity rep uh, that you'd love to work with. Uh, anybody like that would love to get a referral or um, get a chance to meet them. And even if you're not sure, it never hurts to introduce us and you know, we'll do all of our own screening. So that's a real big key I ask that I would like to you know, ask everybody as a favor. The second thing is, um, unlike every other company in our industry, we don't have any commission sales reps. So all of our reps, when they sign an account, they don't get, any, they don't get paid anything. Um, they do have a uh, part of their pay that's incentive pay, but it's based on customer longevity and satisfaction. So it's totally different than everybody else in our industry. And the way that it kind of shapes us that's different is it makes us much more reliant on word of mouth referrals from our clients and the community at large. And so if you either know merchants that you think we might be able to help, or if you know somebody that you feel like knows a lot of merchants, maybe it's like your accountant, or your lawyer, or your banker, or anybody like that that you think, it'd be great if, if our gravity rep knew this person because they can work together and help more merchants. That's really, really helpful for us. So those are kind of the two asks, referrals of merchants or sources of people that know merchants, and then um, adding to our team and everything. So the big goal, so I have a, this 10-year goal, but I have a bigger goal. And this goal is my just for my whole life. I feel like, I asked myself, Dan, if there's only one thing you could accomplish your entire life, work-wise, what's the one thing that you want to do to follow your life? And what I came up with was, I basically want to create a model that other people could look at where, you know, greed is a big part of business today. And a big part of business is how do we get more out of our clients, how do we pull more out of them, how do we just make more money? That's what everyone thinks about in business. Not everyone, but a lot of people think about in business. And as much as people think about that in business, in our industry, it's even maybe like 10 times worse. And so I think we picked one of the industries that's arguably the most greedy, that's going after the little guy. So we want to stand up for the little guy. And what we said is if we could create a model, or what I said, if I could create a model where service could win out over the long run in a competitive situation, service and loyalty to our clients over greed, and everyone could see that like, there's a way to win this by just serving others and like doing your best and always helping other people. If I could just do that one thing in my career, I, I feel like I could check off that box and retire. And you know, so I, I, that's my big goal that I'm going for. I think it's a multi-decade goal. I don't think we've even scratched the surface of it yet. But you know, getting this award was pretty weird because I really don't feel like we've done anything yet, but I thought, well, if we're able to do that someday, then the award I'll be able to look back and say that was justified because we have the vision of what we wanted to do. So, um, so yeah, that's the big idea. Uh, we'd love to partner with any and all of you. We'd love to chat with you after, grab a drink and what, whatnot, and uh, really appreciate you coming tonight. So, you want to say anything else, Matt? All right. Thank you so much for coming. Appreciate it.